if your dog kisses someone else, is it cheating? Now, I've actually witnessed Sabrina is the roof at this. <laughs> what? I've, I've watched Sabrina <laughs> button her husband in the car. It was, I, I'm sat there as her dog trainer going, oh my God, this is brilliant. Luther's showing affection towards her husband and blah, blah, blah. And she goes, not having that. <laughs> I'm Dr. Sab Cohen Hatton, a neuroscientist specialising in animal and human learning mechanisms. I'm Jamie Penrith, I'm a specialist dealing with canine predatory behaviour and I'm a former police dog handler. I'm Daddy Wells and I'm a dog trainer specialising in unwanted and dangerous behaviour. Every week we sit down to talk about the latest research in canine psychology. And more importantly, how you can apply it to your own dog to get to know them a little bit better. Welcome to the Dog Scholar. Right, I've got a question. I love your questions, let's do your questions. You definitely don't. <laughs> Does my dog love me? That's my question. I thought you were going to say look big in this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my dog? Yeah. Um, right, no, serious question. Does yeah. my dog really love me or is it something else? I think that's a question that is going to be burning in everyone's head, oh, won't well, it? I hope so, because yeah. it's a very interesting question. Even beyond the the basic structures of, well, they just, you know, they interact with you because they gain something from you. I think there's more than that. I mm -hmm. think anybody can argue, you know, uh, quite convincingly that there's more than that. And anybody who, who owns a dog. They grow fond of of people by interactions and, and um, associations they make. I think to on their own level, they could probably love them, but I don't think it's the same as how we would love them. Love is a very in-depth thing. Do you think it? It's a very complex that, emotion. Do you think it could be something that people project onto a yeah. dog and, and sort of like see it reflected back at them because that's what they want to see? The way you love your parents, your, your children. If you were to go on holiday for a period of time, you would come back and still be just as fond and love them just the same. However, you know, as Jamie's worked as a police dog handler, I'm sure you've, you've had to, uh, you know, handle many dogs and then pass them to different handlers and have another dog. I've trained many dogs for the police and the prison service. And what I've seen is once that dog is trained and passed on, when they've brought that dog back, that dog doesn't not really care about me whatsoever. The dog's all about the handler. So I would equate their version of love is who's, who's adding value to their lives, who, who's enriching their lives and how fond are they of that particular person in that one moment in time. It's not the same sort of thing when you think about it like that, is it? Could just be a really quick holiday romance though, Yeah, right? maybe. That would know, be mum. How many of your exes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be mum, Sam. Not with me, mum. <laughs> That's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but how many of your exes do you still love? Yeah, but again, you go through a Steady. period. You go through. Steady, yeah, Steady. yeah. You're gonna get me in trouble yeah. But whenever you split up in a relationship, you go through a period of time where you have to grieve that relationship. It's not really something I've seen in dogs as a dog trainer that's supplied, and not just that. I had many dogs in for residential training. Um, it's not something you're seeing where they're grieving. The, you know, the loss of an owner, that I'm missing my owner. They they tend to, if as long as you're providing the stimulation they need and the, you know, the outlets and the activities, I, I, you can bond with dogs quite right. quickly. Well, do you know what? The science is really interesting. And I found this study that basically recruited a load of dogs and gave them all a shot of oxytocin. And then it was looking at what was happening when they were interacting with their owner and another dog that was familiar to them. And what they found is dogs who had oxytocin showed a lot more affection and they interacted more with both the owners and the other dogs. And they would do things like licking them and nuzzling them and touching them much more than the group of dogs that didn't get the shot of oxytocin. So it definitely does something. But I mean, there's an interesting question there, isn't it? How do dogs show affection? Because, you know, we can talk about the affection that we might show our dogs by, you know, petting it or cuddling it or going, I love you so much, Luther. You know, and all of that kind of stuff. I don't talk to my dog like that, honestly. You definitely do. <laughs> But I I've love seen this. him. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> he, bought him, he bought him a sausage once and we were in the pub. Of course he did. He did. Of course he did. Bought him a, an actual sausage meal. So yeah. I think that was Danny showing I love him. all dogs. My oxytocin levels are at an all-time high when I'm around dogs. <laughs> when, you, when you said, if you don't mind, when you said about oxytocin just a minute ago and you said it's a, a, a chemical in the brain, what does it do? What, what is it? It basically sends signals in the brain to different places. So this one, oxytocin, has been implicated in things like love and 
and social bonding and, and the development of trust. When those happen, we're finding this chemical messenger is present. So I've heard of this before w w between mothers and their babies, yeah. when they're feeding babies yeah. and it's something that's mutually exchanged between the two. Is that right? Is yeah, that, is that oxytocin something that goes on? has been found to be involved there okay. as well. Okay, yeah. so, so it's, okay. So it could, could be love, could be sort of like yeah. caregiving, could be yeah. some sort of, sort of like, like you say, so, social behaviour. So they were, they were showing that behaviour to um, dogs and their owners. Yeah. Is it a baseline amount that you get across the board for any dog? So has every dog got the same amount of oxytocin or are some, do uh, some dogs, like with any other aspect of temperament in dogs, character or in people, mm -hmm. have higher amounts of certain chemicals, you know, um, within within the body, neurotransmitters yeah. within the body that, that basically make dog, some dogs more loving. I mean, going back to when you were saying about residentials and people and their own dogs and things like that, you know, there's plenty of people who will say, Everybody has that one dog that you can sort of like go back to that loved you like mad, you know, or loved yeah. you more than the current dog and things like that. So is it something that's across the board because you're the same you? You're acting in the same way with the different animals. What do you think? I'd also be very interested to see what it would be like that study if there was a stranger in the room as well. Because with the owners and another dog, the dog's going to ha have value in those that, you know, run around with the other dog. And the owner obviously feeds, walks, plays with. There's already a relationship established there. I think it'd be very interesting if they furthered that study by when they gave the dog the oxytocin, they had the owner, a dog, and maybe a group of strangers. Does the dog show that mm. same sort of interaction, love as it's you know described towards strangers as well? Because really, if it's just a chemical, then he should feel like that about everything, really, shouldn't he? Or even strange dogs. Mm. Um, I think there's a there's 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 wiggle room there. Why did you look at me funny when you said strange dogs? Well, you own, like you you three think of them, don't you? It's just kind of something. <laughs> it's, it, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is a really interesting question, isn't it? Yeah, very. How would you perceive your dog to love you? I suppose that would be an yeah. interesting one because there are affiliative behaviours that dogs yeah. show as well, aren't there? Like licking and nuzzling you. Yeah. You know, to, and the dog is essentially saying, "I want to engage with you. You know, connect with me, bond yeah. with me." So, you know, could they be indicators of love? So, did these dogs not show that sort of interaction, nuzzling and cuddling kind of behaviour before? Well, they took two groups of dogs. Okay. Half of the dogs had the shot of oxytocin. Half of the dogs didn't. And the dogs who had the oxytocin were basically nuzzling and licking and being more affectionate than the other group of okay, dogs. Okay, so my next question is, can the doctor prescribe that? Because I'm sure my partner would like me a lot more if I had regular shots of oxytocin. <laughs> it just makes me think, and she definitely would. She'd be made up. She'd be made up. Be like, oh, we're going out for the day. Come here, love. Come here. Right, anyway. How, how do you give a dog a shot of oxytocin? What, is it something that, you know, is it, it injected into the brain, yeah. is it? It was a spray up the nose. A spray wow. up the nose. That'd right. be even easier to apply. I could just say it's hay fever stuff, couldn't I? In fact, in fact, that could be the drug of all drugs. Yeah, that would be. be the love drug, uh, oh, wouldn't it? Be, yeah, well, yeah. it has been dubbed the love drug. Right? Yeah. And nobody's ever thought of licensing that and pushing that <laughs> no, out. Yeah. Now, yeah. don't and go watching, getting just any watching ideas. Just watching divorce just come down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you extract oxytocin? Me and Danny have got a business. We've got a business uh, proposal here. Well, the oxytocin definitely does trigger those social behaviours. And we saw that it made the dogs want to interact in a loving way and we know that that's the very formation of social bonds that's the basis but they were doing this with humans and dogs which was really incredible but not only does oxytocin trigger social behaviors but those same behaviors would then trigger the release of more oxytocin so it was like a bio behavioral loop it ah. would do it it, the oxytocin would go, it would trigger the social behaviour, the social behaviour would trigger more oxytocin, mm -hmm. so it would kind of go back and forth. It enhances the good feelings in the parts of your brain that register rewards, um, as well as motivation. So there's a part of your brain called the mesolimbic system, and because that was being activated, those behaviours are repeated. It feels good. It's why you keep going back for more cuddles, right? Because it does feel nice. Sorry, Sab, so are you saying with that behavioural loop, I that. think that's the first time you've ever apologised to me. Uh, yeah, well, um, well, I'm not then. Um, okay. <laughs> if you love me, yeah, yeah. you would. Yeah. Are you <laughs> saying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you saying I, I, well, I'm just trying to get an understanding. Are you saying that once they've had that shot, 
they were able to produce their own oxytocin on a behavioral loop. Yeah, so they'd have the shot, they had more oxytocin, so then they were being more mm -hmm. loving, if you like, they were being more yeah. affectionate. And then the interaction was then creating more oxytocin back. And this is the other thing, right? It wasn't just that the oxytocin led, led to them being affectionate. The other bit that was happening was that affection was then being reciprocated. They were getting affection back from someone else. So it's not just doing the behavior, it's getting the behavior so back. So again, that, that, you know, that, I can't see what's going on in brains, but that would coincide with what we see training, wouldn't it, Jamie? Mm. You know, we can we can achieve that sort of, you know, interaction from our dogs through fulfilling their drive needs and giving them, you know, proper training. The bit that really blows my mind is that they're not just doing this with other dogs. It's not just one of their own species. Yeah. They're doing it across Cross species. species. Yeah. You don't get lizards going to a ladybird and going, oh, we've got this lovely thing going on well, here. It would be <laughs> very <laughs> impressive if you did. Well, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Talking lizard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, what well, without that? an oxytocin? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're set. <laughs> yeah, maybe it wasn't oxytocin that you were taking at the time. But no, do you know what I mean? That is just incredible. Yeah. That's unheard of in the animal kingdom. Yeah. We previously thought that it was only primates that had those kind of um, mm. abilities, but dogs do it as well. And when you think about how they've evolved alongside us for thousands of years, yeah. their success has depended on oh. their interaction with us, yeah. you know? So yeah. It's just incredible. No, it's, it's amazing that, you know, that it started out, you know, obviously select the breeding for purpose, protection, you know, retrieving this kind of thing um it's it, it no doubt no one was thinking of the neuroscience but it was definitely a plan i Someone, think dogs have selectively bred us yeah, i maybe. think they've taken the best ones and kind of like got us to go on dog walks together and fall yeah. in now there you go that mm. one gives out loads of treats that one gives out loads of scritches so yeah. let's take them and try and yeah. get them together that dogs one makes me bold yeah <laughs> Leave my bold dogs alone. <laughs> you love them really. <laughs> I, I love all dogs. Exactly. Good looking ones, ugly ones. Don't make a difference to me. <laughs> Don't call my dog ugly. <laughs> but the amazing thing is that this behaviour that we're seeing is driven by the same brain mechanisms in both humans and dogs. So that's the other bit that's really incredible. Yeah. Is it something, I know that you said it's with humans and dogs, is it something that is also released with rewards, with throwing a ball for a dog, or something that isn't a social interaction, or don't we know, hasn't that research um, been done? Well, it wasn't in this study. This right. study was all based on social interaction. Right. There are other parts of the brain that would fire up I when I just it's getting ask. a reward. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, particularly around like the chordate nucleus, which mm. is involved in processing rewards and things like right. that. So, you know, and, and how important a reward mm. is to you would depend on how much activity you're having there. So there are other parts of the brain that are involved in that. But this one, mm. you know, it's just so incredible to see that similarity between humans and dog so I guess if the question is can your dog love you I mean it depends on your definition of love doesn't it but they can definitely bond with you yeah yeah, yeah right. I'd, I'd be interested to see if um you know if you were to take like a person with, with a partner and give them that same shot of oxytocin along with a dog with their owner or with another dog what parts of the brain are light and lighten up you know you know like you know people might be recalling, you know, memories of the last 10 years they've had together mm. and it all come makes them overwhelmed with that love. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder it, yeah, but it, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what areas might light Sorry. up, what, what areas in the brain will be expected to light up for a human being in love with another human being? What areas the brain would light up and would those same areas light up with the dog who's had the shot of oxytocin, oh, I'd be quite true, interested actually. to see yeah. what, you know, obviously I don't know the neuroscience, that's why we've got the scientist here. Um, <laughs> but I'd want to know, you know, that's lighting up, that's lighting up. Sab, tell me, why is that lighting up? Okay, yeah. Is it doing it with the dog as well? I that... thought you were just being really romantic then for a second. No, then. I don't really have any of that in me, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe you should get my prescription of oxytocin. I'll take my nasal spray everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll be made up. Going forward from that, you know, things that they could they could perhaps do, yeah. or if they haven't done already, you know, would would it might be interesting, Martin, to see what would happen if you had a depleted supply of yeah. oxytocin or if you removed oxytocin and yeah. would you get then get a, a dog yeah. that didn't do you know what I mean that didn't sort of and, like act yeah. with those social behaviors that didn't solicit yeah. attention from people and things like that and to, and to add to that you know the, the kind of like oxytocin maybe we'd be expected to secrete if we were around you know or in, in, in a situation where love is involved that would be that wouldn't be over in a flash, like two, three weeks, whereas, you know, we've taken dogs to residentials and when they come back, they don't really care about their owners anymore. Yeah. They, they've completely bonded with us and they're giving all, us all them all them signals. So, you know, if, if, you, if it was to, 
if I was to be asked straight away now, knowing what I what I know, I say maybe it's a it's a it's a, a dog form of love, but I don't think it's an is an in depth kind of you know thought out mm. feeling of love that human beings are capable of. Yeah, almost like a social yeah. glue that's so like they love yeah, but in their own to, way. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. took mine, yeah. if you took my dog, just the same as you took anybody yeah. else's dog, my dog would be your dog. You yeah. know, my dog would also. They wouldn't sit. I'd I might like to think that they'd sit and pine for me, but not for long. Even <laughs> if they did, and I don't think they would. If yeah. we say no, it's just a trained response. You know, we, we've conditioned that by them thinking that we're we're the bringer of all things that are good. But there's clearly more than that because yeah. people, you know, if they think about their dog. From them, I think you get that. But I wonder, well, clearly, the dog must give, project, offer something that engenders that sort of like feeling within you and, and, and causes you to feel like. On the grand scheme of things, it's like any behavior. When you do it, when you put repetition to something, it gets stronger, it gets more, it evolves. And I think when you're spending a considerable amount of time with your dog, enriching their lives, you know, they, they, they sat there waiting because they know dogs are very aware of space and time. So they know you're coming home from work at half past five. They're there waiting for your wagon because they know they're going for a walk. And I, I do think that it starts out like a trained exercise. But that whole living in a world of anticipating good things from a certain person develops into their own little way of love. I remember when we visited Jamie, I went out while he, while he, took, while he took his dogs out and every single one of his high drive dogs looked to him like my dogs looked to me. They're all sat there like this all the time, but I knew what was coming. I knew Jamie was gonna get something out of that van and start throwing yeah. it and playing retrieve games. And the dogs, they're in awe of him, but you know, well, we're all in awe of Jamie. To be yeah, honest. yeah, you'd be, love you'd, you'd be fool not to be. Look, he's a specimen of a man. <laughs> <laughs> he's a beast. Of a yeah. <laughs> but if we go back to the yeah, science, yeah, it yeah. was the oxytocin that was yeah. making the dogs want to interact. And again, that loving interaction, well, however you want to badge it, that affiliative yeah. behaviour, that interaction, that's the very basis for the formation of social bonds, isn't it? I've also, as a, as a professional dog trainer, and I'm sure Jamie can attest to this, I've seen lot the love that people have for their dogs destroy the relationship that they've had with the dogs, making dogs nervous wrecks, um, causing really severe separation anxiety where they won't let the dog have time to self-soothe. So it's also important to understand that, you know, the, the love that you're trying to build in your dog needs to be a healthy form of love for you and the dog. If you're just kind of, you know, pushing your needs and your demands onto the dog and it's fulfilling, you know, a void within, it's quite common, isn't it, Jamie? Yeah, People who overlove the dogs, they create a, a you know a, a, a plethora of behavioural problems. If you love the dog for being a dog, as well as for being your dog, rather than trying to yeah. create something yeah. that the dog isn't, or you know, forgetting what they actually are, forgetting their natural needs, what their actual species-specific requirements are, and things like this. Love them for what they are. Do you know? And I think yeah. then you can sort of like the dog will reciprocate that that. Um, it's almost like a gratitude, yeah. I, it, I suppose. It, 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 it really know? is. I see exactly where you're going. You know, I'm dealing with clients whose dogs have just randomly started biting them and going for them. And a lot of it I see is they're trying to push onto their dog how they show their love, but it's not appreciated by the dog. So a lot of this can be avoided by doing the things that your dog as an individual, approaching your dog from a dog-centered approach and saying, how, what does my dog as an individual value from me? So for an example, there's a picture there of, of Wade on me and I'm crushing his ears back. A lot of dogs won't like that. Wade loves that sort of interaction and that is actually a command. He hasn't just jumped up, I've said hugs and he does it because he likes the attention he gets from it. The behavioral loop starts, he likes the attention, he goes down, do it again. It's, it's one big cycle of behavior. A lot of people will try and do these things to their dog because they need that sort of you know outlet. It's a, it's a feel good factor for people but it's at the detriment of the relationship with the dog because they type a lot of dogs will not like their ears being crushed back when you're stroking them. And I think sometimes our love for, for our dog can can ruin the love that our dog might have for us in terms of how we how we, you know, benefit their lives. I mean that's a really interesting point as well, actually, with Wade jumping up at you. I mean could it be that Wade is actually addicted to the dopamine that he's getting I, from I'd the so. scratches? I'd say so. He gets you know? super aroused looking at me, waiting for the command of oh. hugs. And, then, and when he does it, he digs he digs his dew claws in and really, really, as if he's hugging me. Well, it's a social reinforcer, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. You know, just in, interaction But do you know how that was taught? Do you know how that was taught? I put a ball under my chin. <laughs> hugs and put his paws on, yes. And then we turn that into a squeeze, a squeeze, a squeeze, then took the ball away. And now the, he's not, he hasn't had the ball for that for about two years. I just Aww. go hugs and he comes in and grips me and everyone thinks it's a hug. And, now, you know. is it that Wade is getting the dopamine from the scratches or is it Oh, we really definitely both you? are. It's yeah. definitely a mutual dopamine hit, yeah. My dopamine <laughs> matches his dopamine and we just bask in dopamine. <laughs>
I, I did a, um, I mean, with, with Sherlock, you know, one of, one of my guys, I did a similar sort of thing since when he was a puppy. I, there was a heck of a lot of physical handling and manipulation and stuff like that that wasn't followed by a ball. It wasn't followed by food or, or, or anything else. It was just done and, and to, to enable him to relax whilst he's, he's being handled. And, you know, to the point that he would, you know, you, I, I can pick the dog up and, well, I've got him around my shoulders asleep or in my arms asleep as I'm walking with him and things like that, which sort of like, I don't know. What's the motivator for that? You know, yeah. from the dogs, what, what, what's the reward for that from the dog? If it isn't, arguably, I like being with you. You know, I like I like what we're sharing. And I know? think dogs do Difficulty. like being with us. And I don't think it's an accident. You know, obviously, go back thousands of years ago. No one was thinking of the neuroscience, but it weren't an accident. It was a it was a strategic plan to get dogs to bond with us and have an interspecies relationship to serve us, whether it's going to be retrieving, protection, whatever's going on. It wasn't an accident. So I think, I, well, let's see more about the science, Sab, because I would say it's it's quite believable that dogs have evolved to want to please. Absolutely. Well, I think dogs have evolved alongside humans. Yeah. And when you read the research, it's fascinating to see how dogs brain architecture, their actual neural chemistry has evolved alongside humans to really kind of impact on that relationship, to make it an effective relationship between dogs and humans. The way they can read our faces, for example, is unparalleled in the rest of the animal kingdom. It's phenomenal. Absolutely, Charlotte can't read my face for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Wade definitely reads my face better. <laughs> but when dogs gaze into our eyes and when we gaze into their eyes, that also releases oxytocin. There's been some really fascinating studies on it. So, you know, even that act of looking in, uh, looking into each other's eyes makes you want to bond more. You're releasing oxytocin. You want to cuddle them more, right? So, you know, I certainly know that with Luther, he'll look up at me and I'll look at, down at him and that'll be it then. It'll be like a scene from a Disney movie. There's basically little birds going around mm -hmm. us and everything. It's proper love. I know you'd call it bonding because that's a more manly way of saying love, isn't cold. it? Cold I'm, and detached. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in bond with you, you romantics, you. But no, it is. Uh, ewes with their lamb. Mm. You have ponies with their foals. You have, you know cows with their calves and you see the and you hear the the ewe call and you hear the lamb call and the lamb runs over to mum and the such and such is it love mm. you know is it love or is it something that that um, biological instinct to yeah survive. you know Attachment. exactly yeah, yeah. or is it you yeah you must do that you, you you've been genetically well you'll see you'll, you'll see many that. farmers you know if if um if cows die they'll they'll put the calf with and with with another um cow that's yeah, lost yeah. the calf yeah. and they'll just bond straight a, yeah. straight away yeah. it's 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 interesting. Wouldn't it be brilliant if we could just get inside their heads and just see what's going on? I think we'd be mortified. Well, that's what you've just done. Well, oh, yeah. I like to think <laughs> so. actually like see life yeah. as they see yeah. life. Because oh, yeah. they're very reactive dogs, aren't they? They're, yeah. not, they're not looking for answers. You know, it's a blissful world when, when you're walking around looking for your next fix of fun and you're not aware of your mortality. I think... Um, Sounds like teenage years, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really does. I think it's, um, I think it's a blissful ignorance to the world around you. I really, really do. I think that's why people love dogs so I much. Do, well, it's because definitely why I, I love yeah, dogs. I, I, think I, you, love, I love living in the moment yeah. with them. I think you see something that, as a species, we've yeah. lost. And perhaps we once possessed it, that ability to just live immediately for the now, yeah. caring nothing of the past, knowing nothing of the future. Just and think this, about this, survival, your next exactly, meal. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Live, laugh, yeah. you know, love, yeah. if you like. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, it's, I think it's something that we see and, and it triggers something within us where, you know, something that we perhaps envy to a degree. Well, I'll tell you something now. I love you guys. Yeah. We'll be right back after the Thank break. You. <laughs> if you really want your dog to look like he loves you, you know, in, in, in every she. sense of the word. Or she, yeah. I only say that because I've got male dogs who do this on class all the time. Um, then increase the value you bring to your dog's life. Spend quality time with your dog. Don't take your dog out for training and just chuck a ball and be on your phone. Have your dog interact with you. Have your dog, you know, doing exercises to achieve the ball. Same with food, you know. Bring value to your dog's life. As I'm sure people do, you know. Just sit and just be with and mm. just interact with, chill out with and just... Well, I think the whole point of what we're talking about here is looking at things from a dog-centred approach. A dog is an individual. And, you know, what you might get from, you know, the slightly overweight British Bulldog in the sense of being together would cause behavioural problems if you're trying to just be together 
in a field full of sheep with with a with a lurcher. Do you know, mm. do you know what I mean? You're going to have to make an effort to fulfil that dog's drive needs and have the dog look to you for fulfilment of them needs rather than look to the environment. So considering your dog's genetics is going to be a vital part in that, isn't it? Would yeah, you agree? And I, I, I just think you know respecting what they are yeah, appreciating that, that, that they are a dog we have selectively bred you know yeah. uh, various different breeds for di various different tasks and being aware of that you know being aware of what their needs are do you know what I mean retrievers what, what, retrieving right, for example yeah, yeah. Herders huskies herd, pulling you know? yeah right yeah. And, and actually maybe you can't necessarily fulfil that exactly as you should you know because of the world that we live in and, and social snowing. expectations yeah. So, yeah, and that <laughs> yeah, but, and that yeah, but, and you've got a team yeah. of them yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. to it <laughs> when we look to it, you've got, as individuals, we've got so much going on in our lives. We go on holidays. Yeah. We, we, you know, we have sports activities. We, we, we have hobbies. We have all these different things. Your dog has you and you alone. Yeah, so if you're going to get a dog, one. make sure you're making an effort to understand your dog as an individual and as a specific breed, and learn to bring value to your individual dog. Yeah. I agree with you. It's a really good idea, actually. Have you got any good examples for for specific breeds that people could do? Yeah, so your GP breeds, they like they like to bite. GPs, yeah, general purpose. Ge general purpose breeds. You've got you've you've got your German Shepherds, your Malinois, your Rottweilers, your Dobermans, all these kind of breeds. They like to bite. You know, if you're if you're trying to get them to pay more attention to you than what's out and about, if they've got high levels of prey drive and they like to do that, and you're just like giving them something and letting them run off, they're not going to get that same fulfillment. Same with your, you know, your your, sp your spaniels. Your, your, if you're just throwing a ball in a straight line, spaniels like to quarter. Right. They like they like to rummage around. You know, chuck different balls out, play play games with them. Labradors like to retrieve. But be careful with the off switch on that, because my dog will retrieve all day long. He does a public service if we're out. Oh, He'll bring back oh. cans of coke, bottles all the time. I should be on Granada tonight. Do a public <laughs> service, I swear to God. Didn't he? Didn't he turn up on your bed with a bottle in the middle uh, of the yeah, night? Yeah, yeah. I woke up and he picked up me, um, me nasal spray. Unfortunately, it weren't me oxytocin <laughs> nasal spray. But he, uh, yet, I woke yet. up. I woke up to a little noise. Uh, shh, 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 shh. And I was like, what is that? I opened my eyes and he's there with my nasal spray, my hay fever nasal spray. Just, just <laughs> wagging his tail and went, thanks mate, get in your bed. <laughs> Aww. So yeah, it's that's how much that 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 is how deep rooted those genetics are to retrieve. It brings him joy. It brings you know the fact that he didn't take it around the other side to me partner. He brought it to me because I'm the one who plays these retrieving yeah, yeah. games with him. So yeah, just a little bit of research. Even you know Google can let you down with a lot of things, but one thing it kind of can give you a, a basic list of what then what dog you're looking at is bred for, and what that you should have a good idea of what that, that them dogs are interested in. Are there any really general things that people might want to think about if they don't know what breed their dog is? if it's a mixed breed what kind of general things could people think about observe the dog you know what switches them on is it a dog like you say with spaniels they're busy yeah. you know busy dogs busy spanieling you know nose down do, 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 getting in there wanting to get in the, in the bushes and the hedgerows and stuff mm. like that okay so if i've got a dog where i don't know what you are you know, you might be a European rescue that yeah, I've brought yeah. in or something like that, or you're a Heinz 57 or a cross of some kind or whatever. I don't know what you are, but I can look at what you do. I, yeah, I, can, yeah. I can read you and think, what, what switches you on? Are you something that loves to see fast moving things going by? You know, and if you are, right, I can manipulate that. I can use that. I can bring things to life. I can bring things, speed to things. How on. would you do that? However, you know, whether, whether it's using... Um, Toys on ropes or flirt poles, which is basically like a or you know food. a long so yeah food or or like long uh, riding crop if you like with a bit on the end of it and a foxtail on the end of a fake foxtail. So they can chase something. it, yeah, right. Right. like the ones so, you so, use for cats, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. something that you're just basically kicking into that dog's. Let the dog show you what motivates the dog, and that will give you an idea. As to, even if I don't know exactly what your breed is, you know, or your breeds are, it will give me an idea of what switches you on and it allow allow me to work with what you like mm. rather than trying to shoehorn you into how I think or how people think that, I like that. you should be. Do you I know like what psychoanalysis I mean? Yeah, of yeah your it dog. is. And yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, some of them are the exception to their breed. Some of them are very, very, well, so let's say they really lack motivation. Some of them have zero drive to them. They're not really interested in anything. We've so, all got that one mate like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as, as a dog owner, you have to look to how can I, how can I make myself more appealing? And that might be that you limit the dog's freedom for a period of time. And whenever you visit that dog, oh my God, I'm going to get to go out. I'm going to do things. It might be hand feeding. So you're, you're in charge of vital resources to the dog. That's not every dog, but there is always a way to keep your dog more interested in you. And the beauty of dogs, it, to me, is their ability as associative learners. If you're limiting your dog's freedom because they're absolutely low in drive and not really interested in you at the moment, 
Your dog's not sat there going, no one lets me roam round. Your dog's sat there going, when are you coming? When are you coming? They're associative learners. The dog's there waiting to be interacted with, waiting to go out with you. It's a lot easier to, to come from a position of where you've had a yeah. dog from a pup. Because where you've had a dog from a pup, you sculpt, you get that, you get that dough, and you sculpt it yeah. to, and you know that as it, as it proves that it's going to essentially come into whatever shape of loaf, yeah. if you like, canine loaf that, that you that you intended to bake, bake you for the outset. You bake your dogs into bread. Yeah. Canine loaves. Yeah. God, that's yeah, yeah, a, yeah. that brings a whole it's new like, meaning it, to it, my it, dog it, was bread for this. It's a skill. It? it takes time. Yeah. It takes a lot of time. But like Danny Mine would say, mine would be sourdough. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Girls would be unedible. <laughs> good, good. So I don't want anyone to eat my dog. When you, <laughs> I'm not having toast in your house again. So what are you saying? Oh, I don't really make dogs out of bread. <laughs> bread out of dogs. Dog bread. Dogs out of bread. God. <laughs> Blow me mind. I'm off track now. Right. Sorry, so, no, sorry, all sorry. I, all I was going to say is... I bake my own dogs. dogs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Childish, isn't it? Right, fun though. Um, yeah. No, all I was going to say is like when Danny, you were saying about controlling the dogs, you know, and controlling the environment. And and we we live in a time where, you know, this, they must be autonomous and, and you know, we must seek consent from the dog and this, that and the other. But the, fill your boots. Fill your boots if that's what you want to do and reap the rewards of doing that. Yeah. Or do reap, what reap dogs the like. Or yeah. reap the fall, reap the fall or out. Or do something by saying, okay, sweetheart, this yeah. is what I need you to know. Yeah. This is what all these things that are going to be, like you say, they're going to be these things that when you grow up, they would really compete with you if I can't show you that I'm better than a lot of them. That's I'm exactly the attitude. Than the lot. And I'll bring it on to something else as well. We see the same with kids. I, I gave myself a little wake up check um, once upon a time when the business started really picking up. I realised that, you know, the, the, the little in, in our house, my stepdaughter, you, you, the only time you're really interacting is when you're telling them off, when you discipline them. You need to clean your room. Why is this out? Why is that out? You're not actually going, oh, what are you doing? That's really good. That's it. You find that you're only in, interacting in, an, in a negative mindset. And I'll tell you something, you know, when you touched upon these people who believe, like, you know, the dogs need consent and it's, it, it can become quite extreme. My first dog training, uh, well, that's my second dog training job, we shared a field with people who believe like that. And I tell you now, on every one of my dog's lives, my daughter's life, I have never seen so many people shouting at their dogs unnecessarily. And it's all out of frustration because they've allowed their dogs the freedom because not only consenting and all this to get up to mischief. And they think the answer to that is to scream and shout. But, but, uh, but it's not the answer. It is not the answer. Right, we're going to go to listener questions now. So we've got some great questions that came in. Jamie? Yeah, I'm going to fire off with the first one. When dogs show us affection, I'll throw the bunny ears in. When dogs <laughs> show us affection, is that natural dog behaviour or have they learned to imitate what humans do or what we would expect so that we understand it as affection? Oh, that's a good one. Well, if my dog was imitating what I would expect of humans, then I would expect him to be getting me flowers. I would expect <laughs> him to be bringing <laughs> yeah. me breakfast in bed. Um, <laughs> you don't expect much, do you? No. <laughs> 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 there better, better be some oxytocin <laughs> flying around the air, I should tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> well, if there's not, you can get out. <laughs> okay, so, well, I think that's quite a, a simple question that we'd all agree on. I think the dog's portraying behaviour that gets the dog brings the dog joy. So if the dog learns that rolling on my belly gets me a belly rub, then it'll repeat that behavior. Right. If the dog comes over and puts his, his head on your lap and you go, come on then, and you and you jump on the couch, well, the dog learns that that betters my mm. current situation. That doesn't say it's not giving the dog a feel good factor and it's not increasing the bond that you have with your dog, but I think it's a learned behavior through trial and error. Mm. And I think there are some, there are some uh, kind of more innate uh, affectionate behaviours from dogs, affiliative behaviours. So when the dog might come up and it might lick you or nuzzle you or start to kind of nudge you for affection, those can be innate behaviours because it wants to try to bond with you, it wants a connection with you as well. But you're absolutely right, there's a lot that they can do associatively as well. And I think the danger is sometimes you see one and you think that that's purposeful, you think that's you know the dog wanting love, but actually there might be another mechanism at play yeah. there as well. What yeah, do you think, and I, I, I just think it's, I think, I think it's just social behaviours. Yeah, yeah. You know, so Social behaviors for a social species. Yeah. Watch, watch a, yeah. um, a mother with a litter of puppies. You know, um, while she nuzzles and licks and cleans, and then as she, as they begin to mature, when she starts weaning, she starts telling them off a little bit and tells them to keep away, and then we'll instantly begin to praise them again and you know bring it in. I think they learn that and they learn with one another as well. I don't really see it as imitating um, people, but I do see it as something that the dog perhaps learns, gives 
joint, you know, mutual yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. like um, yeah. enjoyment yeah. by doing. Um, well, and I don't yeah. see anything wrong with it. Well, what yeah. I would say is dogs, dogs, from my experience, live to better their own situation. And although they are rare, take the example you just gave there, Sab, the dog nudges you for affection. Some dogs will work out that if I just act like your little baby, I will get that affection. However, some dogs will try and elevate levels of aggression to achieve that same result. Luckily, they're not very common. So if anyone's listening at home um, and a dog and their dog is showing that, i.e. they give you a, a nudge and you, don't, and you withhold the stroke and then you start hearing a growl or a grumble, it's important that you seek professional advice straight away with that. Do not let that behavior become something that you, it's too late to fix. Yeah. That's a really good point. Second question? Yes, please. Okay, Danny, I'm going to aim this one probably at you, really, to kick off with. Question two, is there a connection with obedience and perceived loyalty or love from the owner? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's that one done, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next, next question. I wish yeah. I get the same with your spouse. You know, dog, why? Why, why is yeah, there? Why dog, is again, there? we've gone through this a million times. Dogs are associative learners. What it, does that mean? It, it means that they learn by association. So if, if you're doing something, if you're doing the same routine, let's say every time you go out, you give your dog a bowl of water on the floor. I'm using that because we, we, we do that straight away in my house. I've got high drive dogs. If you leave a bowl of water with them, they'll smash it up and play the drums. That's just <laughs> what they do. High drive dog problems. So every morning I go out to get a massive pan of water for the two of them and, and, and that's just the miles. The others have water in the crates. I, um, I fill a bowl up and they run there. So now being an associative learner, I open the door and they, they go into the places where I put the bowls every morning and look up at me. That's, that's an association. They know what's coming next, so they follow. So where the question says perceived loyalty or love, do you think it is loyalty or love? I think, or it's, think, lo it's, I think it's loyalty is, is in the sense that my dog is, I've, I've, I've molded that to be my dog's world. So loyalty is in the sense of they're not going to go running off after that because they find enough joy and value in the moment with me. So yeah, yeah it's again, I think we boils down to loyalty, but not as human beings would describe loyalty, a dog form of loyalty. Yeah. I was just going to say that even outside of outside of competition obedience, you know, oh, in, yeah. in just everyday people take your dog for a walk yeah. to the park, you buzz yeah. on the ball, you yeah. do whatever you do, you know, you pick the lead up, the dog yeah. comes over to you, and yeah. even those milder yeah. associative learning, um, well, it depends who who's here. Yeah, dog wags its tail by the front door, you pick up the lead. Who's taught who? Yeah, <laughs> who's the associative yeah, learner? Yeah. But I think you know, yeah, I I, I think it does um, increase. It increases an interaction. It increases a codependency. You know, like with yeah. that, you know, yeah. who's taught who, and and I think it's I think it's great. You know, I think in, it, in, yeah, in, right. yeah, in short, you know, the more you enrich your dog's life and bring value to their dog's life, the more, however it, however you know what level it's possible. But the more loyalty your dog will show you, you will be re rewarded with a very very good relationship. And and I truly believe there's no relationship like it. You will never get from a human being like you can get from a dog. Right. So well, I've got um, ran a, a puppy. Um, you know, documented the raising of a, a puppy or two puppies yeah. from from nine weeks to you know nine months or whatever. A and very good puppy program, and people should subscribe <laughs> to that puppy program. <laughs> that wasn't what I was doing. That wasn't you should, what mate. I was you doing. should. It brings value what, to every puppy no, owner. What I was going to say is that during that during that uh, process where I showed people. So what we're talking about, I showed people, and it involved, for example, taking two dogs, uh, littermates, um, down, which people would say you shouldn't have because they compete in littermate syndrome and they'll always, their bond will always be greater than yours. It isn't true. If you no, do, it's if not you think say, about Yeah, and, Tinkerbell yeah, and Truman. Yeah. Yeah. So it isn't true if you do things properly, which is treat each dog as an individual, you know, uh, honour their individual needs and, and train them as individuals. But I would take them down, just like you were saying there, Danny, take them down onto a beach in summertime and they were with me. It was at a time when they're young enough to almost be in that following mode anyway yeah, yeah. but you're starting to introduce summertime beaches down in Cornwall right and, and and there's stuff everywhere there's people and there's dogs I ran I jogged right jogged <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's not much really going on here for a while <laughs> yeah. I, I, jo I jogged along the beach and they follow and they follow as they're going past these distractions to stay alongside with you and then periodically it'd stop and a ball would be thrown or a you know a, a toy of some kind would be thrown and like you say you just began yeah. to I didn't tell them to do anything uh, no. I didn't compel them to just do anything building that association right. yeah. yeah they taught themselves this guy's more important yeah. than these things which pays dividends when they yeah. when yeah. they grow and, up. and can I can I just mention as well to the guys at home the amount of inquiries that both me and Jamie get that people that are at the wit's end that just can't achieve these basic behaviours. This is not difficult dog training. And 
If you've heard this podcast now and you've felt inspired by it, you can reach out to any reputable dog trainer and learn this. It's not difficult, is it? No, it's it very easy dog training. Um, and it's definitely worth doing. Honest to God, you'll never have a relationship like it with a dog if you do if you if you make them at them. Yeah, them and, I, and I think that, that that matters if it's you know if you're bringing a dog in from a puppy or if you're yeah. adopting a dog from a shelter or you're bringing yeah. a dog in from abroad. You yeah. know, their their past is their past. It can't be changed. You've yeah. got the material that you have, but you can still take that material yeah. forward. Dogs and, adapt and overcome. Yeah, they adapt great, to the environment they're in. You oh, might have a dog incredible. that's been in a previous home that just runs off and does everything, but you change that whole picture, and this is the outcome of this picture. Yeah. Your dog will more to that yeah. your dog will morph to that if you know how all right if you'd like to get in touch with us you can find us at dog scholar podcast on social media or you can email podcast at the dog that's all we got time for this week so if you've enjoyed the episode then please share it with a friend and if they don't like it maybe their dog will and finally over to danny for the final word oh yeah leave it to me okay so being valued by your dog is not too dissimilar to being valued by your partner. It's important that you address them as an individual and make sure that you're putting the right sort of time into them. Maybe not everything like your partner, but you get where we're going with that. <laughs> That's all we got time for. We'll see you next week. <laughs>